Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you guys my uh, What's Better, Flawless Smackdown, Episode 40 review. This is the 40th episode. I've been doing these for 40 episodes now. I know I'm late on getting this uh, video up, um, but uh, um, but if you've watched my video, the channel update video on my Wrestling Fortune 44 uh, YouTube channel, which you should totally check out down in the description box below. Um, because I post a lot of great content on there. Please make sure you guys subscribe to that and click on the bell so that way every time you upload a video on that channel, you guys will get the notifications for it. Um, but yeah, I've been, um, but yeah, if you watch that channel, I obviously talk about that I've been readjusting to being back in school, so that's why I haven't really been able to do this video. So I'm here to give it to you guys now. Um, it's extremely early in the morning. Um, so I just want to get it right out of the way because I'm going to be honest, I haven't gone to sleep yet. Um, I tried sitting there and going to bed, but my body just wasn't having it. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I may, uh, uh, that's not going to be a great day for me. Um, but yeah, I'm here to give you guys my, uh, what's better while a Smackdown video where I review the two shows and then compare the two and decide which one's better. So I'm gonna get, um, start off with Monday Night Raw. Uh, we have it took place on September 11th, 2017. We had Corey Graves, Michael Cole, and Booker T on commentary for this show. I'm just gonna kind of run through all the shit because it was a lot of shit. Um, they uh, well they had a nice little 9/11 video package. You know, obviously it was the uh, 16 years. Um, Remember in the day of 9-11, so they did a nice little video package for it. I thought that was actually a nice touch by WWE. And uh, let me just get right into the shit. So obviously everything going on with this Raw Women's Championship Fatal 4-Way match build-up is just stupid and bad. You know, you have Emma defeat... No, you have Sasha Banks defeat Emma uh, via the bank statement where Emma doesn't even get an entrance and she's supposed to be one of the competitors in this fatal four-way match, and yet you made her look like a complete jobber. You have Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax on commentary. Somehow Alexa Bliss is still a heel, even though Nia Jax turned on her, and Nia Jax are trying to position into a face. I don't know what they're doing, but it's stupid. Later on in the night, though, something that made me excited was uh, Asuka uh, had a little vignette, and it's official. Asuka's going to be going to Monday Night Raw. Which is probably the better place for her to go, considering the fact that Raw kind of needs her at the moment. You know, you have people on SmackDown. SmackDown, I think, is uh, actually doing really well with the woman right now. Because um, everyone's at least in a story and stuff. Uh, you ha um, and Raw, the women's division's kind of bland. So you need, um, I think Asuka would improve the division quite a bit. Um, what I didn't like about Asuka being announced on Raw was I think this should have been something weeks and weeks. You would have had... Uh, uh, Raw and SmackDown fight for because Asuka should have been somebody you fought for. This was a person uh, that was undefeated in NXT, had it lost, and I think you should have done some negotiation deals where you have Kurt Angle going to Asuka's house. Uh, same thing with like a Daniel Bryan or something. So I just personally think that it was pretty stupid that they kind of get uh, just had her get signed instead of building stories to it. Because you could do these vignettes and they're cool and all, but I think it would be even cooler. If you had um, Kurt Angle and Daniel Bryan fighting to get, because it's not like she's gonna be on TV anyways, and I guess that's the, and I get that's the point of these vignettes, but I think that would have been better. Then you see Nia Jax watching it later on in the night. Alexa Bliss tries to come in and give a BS apology to uh, Nia Jax. Nia Jax says, uh, and Alexa Bliss says they just want to get back to being friends again. Nia Jax says, well, I'll, ha well, I'll have to think about it, but you're not gonna like what I did. I went and I requested. Um, a match against you next week, and now this week on Raw because it's Monday today. Um, we're gonna get Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss. Uh, a match that they've dedicated months of story into is just gonna be thrown away on Raw. That's stu stupid, and everything involved in this four way stupid. It just it should be it should be a one on one match anyways between Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss, um, and that's final. No one's gonna tell me otherwise. Uh, other stuff that was stupid on this show was Elias versus Kalisto. Stop cutting off Elias' um, concert when he's performing. Um, I, uh, that's how he gets over. That's how he's going to get heat. Elias versus Kalisto was pointless. Elias wins with Rift Away. Pointless. Uh, other stuff. Boy Wyatt versus Goldust. 
You know, Bray Wyatt cuts a promo on Goldust, and he talks about how he's just like Finn Balor. He's hiding behind his paint, even though that's what. Um, even though the whole feud was Finn Balor wanted to bring, was Bray Wyatt wanted to bring the demon out in Finn Balor, but yet now he doesn't want the demon. It was stupid. Bray Wyatt just squashes Goldust. They've completely given up on Goldust, and they got went away from that protege he was supposed to have. That's stupid. Uh, Bray afterwards, Bray Wyatt takes a cloth and goes to wipe off the. Uh, face paint off Goldust. Finn Balor runs out and makes the save. This is stupid. This feud's stupid, and I hope it ends at No Mercy. Um, what else? It was stupid on War. Everything involved in the tag team tag team division was kind of stupid. You know, Sheamus and Cesaro get interviewed, and uh, they talk about how they're gonna defeat Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. How they can't work together as a team, and they're gonna um and their little um fairy tale of being ta War tag team champions going to come to an end. They they were supposed to have a match with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, but Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose were on commentary in this, um, during this match, and they attack um, Sheamus and Cesaro, and Gallows and Anderson gets involved, and it turns into a big brawl. So Kurt Angle tells Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins that they have to find two tag team partners to face them in an eight-man tag team match. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins go backstage looking for partners. They find some local crew backstage. Then they run into uh, Dean Malenko and Jamie Noble, which was uh, pretty funny. Uh, but then they went into the Hardy Boys. And they picked the Hardy Boys. Which obviously everyone knew was coming. So then. Um, Corey Graves in one commentary was like. Is there something wrong with Matt? Because Matt was acting very broken. Which was pretty cool. And then we had the 8 man tag. Uh, Shane Mason says I'll walk out. And Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins and the Hardy Boys win. When Rollins hits the high knee. Or whatever it's called. And uh, Ambrose hits the dirty deeds on I think. Uh, I think it was Carl Anderson for the win, and it was all just whatever. I didn't really care much for it. Shouldn't have made it ended the show. It just made the show kind of fall flat. Uh, what else was stupid on Raw? Because there was other stupid stuff. Everything involving Roman Reigns and John Cena was kind of stupid. The match between Roman Reigns and Jason Jordan was good. Roman Reigns won with a spear. But the match was good. I thought the Cena's match was better. Then Cena gets interviewed later on in the night backstage. And, um... Well, after the match, I should say. And then uh, he says that he's going to say everything that he wants to say to Roman Reigns' face. He goes out to the ring, and they have another segment. This was pretty much a copy and paste segment from the pre previous week. I thought they had some good lines, though. Cena uh, says that you, I'm, um, says that Roman, uh, you know, Roman Reigns just talked about how Cena can't, how he's been selling the tickets that John Cena hasn't sold in five years. Even though, if you look behind Roman Reigns, the um, arena was completely dark, which means that that wasn't the case. And um, you know, John Cena. Uh, he talks about how uh, John Cena hasn't had a good match in five years. To which I say bullshit on that. Uh, John Cena pretty pretty much owns Roman Reigns, and he says that um, he's going to be like a drug test uh, to Roman Reigns at uh, you know Mercy. He can't pass him. Although I thought that was a decent joke, and I thought that was good. And uh, yeah. But overall, the segment I just didn't care for because it was very repetitive and it didn't really do anything. And Roman Reigns, I didn't think it was very strong on the mic. And then later on in the night, now on to the only good things I thought was everything involving Braun Strowman. You know, you had Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman come out and Paul Heyman cuts a promo talking about how, uh, you know, um, how Braun Strowman reminds him of Brock Lesnar back when he first debuted in the WWE in 2002. He was taking out everybody and... Uh, he says that um, to beat Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman's going to have to be um, more of a badass uh, than, um, you know, uh, Brock Lesnar. And Braun Strowman comes out because Brock Lesnar wants to fight him. He lays out Brock Lesnar again. He actually knows so does German Suplex. It was awesome, and I really enjoyed it. Then later on in the night, he has a match with John Cena. He And obviously, they weren't going to have any of them win since Cena's got a match coming up with Reigns and Strowman's got a match coming up with... G um, with uh, Brock Lesnar, so it makes sense to kind of do the DQ. Uh, what I hated that they he didn't get DQ'd for hitting him with the steps, but he got D DQ'd for hitting them on a power slam on the steps. But everything in Braun Braun Strowman I thought was very well done, um, and it really made him look strong uh, going into No Mercy. And uh, overall, Raw was boring though. I think it was going up against Monday Night Football, so they didn't try. Stupid. Um, so whatever. Smackdown, I'll just kind of talk about the stuff. Um, everything involving Kevin Owens was fantastic. 
I loved his opening promo segment, how he was talking about how he was going to change the show. He was going to put Byron Saxon and Tom Phillips, uh, who were doing commentary as well as Corey Graves, in the same suit. He was going to uh, fire Sami Zayn. And Daniel Bryan comes out and says that he's still in charge. But Kevin Owens says he, he would have him work as a janitor. Daniel Bryan says that Vince McMahon's coming. And Kevin Owens says, I have a lot to say to Vince McMahon. So throughout the night, Kevin Owens is going through uh, backstage, talking about all the things he's going to change. He goes up to Sami Zayn, tells him that I know he promised that after we make it uh, to WWE, um, we wouldn't be, uh, go back to wrestling in front of 30 fans. Uh, but you're going to have to break that promise because when I... Um, when this becomes a Kevin Owens show, you're going to be fired. Sami Zayn says he'd rather work in front of 30 people than work for Kevin Owens. Um, and then Kevin Owens goes up to Aiden English, wants him to sing the SmackDown theme song. That was cool. Then it leaves the Vince McMahon coming out, and I thought they had a very, uh, really well done segment. You know, uh, Vince McMahon says that he suspended, uh, Shane McMahon because, um, he didn't get the job done and he didn't have the balls to finish the job. And he says that uh, if Kevin Owens tries to assume he'll fire him and he'll, uh, uh, you know, he'll make Kevin Owens go bankrupt since he's never lost a uh, lawsuit, even though I beg to differ. Uh, that's pretty much why uh, the WWF became the WWE. And, uh, you know, he makes the match, a uh, Hell in a Cell match, Kevin Owens versus uh, Shane McMahon. And Kevin Owens wants Vince to promise that if he's provoked um, by any of the McMahons, he, he won't get it. There will be no consequences for it for beating him senseless. Uh, Vince shakes his hand. Kevin Owens headbutts Vince McMahon. Um, and he, he gets busted open, which is getting hate for because of all... Because they did a spot like this in New Japan and stuff. So I can understand that aspect. I, I do think Vince is too old to be taking bombs to that. I will agree with. But this was still awesome. Uh, Kevin Owens beats the crap out of Vince McMahon. He gets a super kick on him and then a frog splash. And I thought this was awesome. It made Kevin Owens look like a badass. And it was just sick. Uh, other stuff I liked on SmackDown is uh, I like this. Um, I like this. Um, I like the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match with the Sin City, where the Usos defended the titles against uh, Biggie and Kofi Kinston. Something I didn't care for is that they didn't come out with Xavier Woods. I know he's hurt and everything, but technically we're not supposed to know that in the kayfabe standpoint. So why didn't they come out with them? Um, overall, I thought they had a really good street fight. I don't really remember a whole lot of the spots or anything, but you guys can go watch it for yourselves. Uh, the, new, the New Day win and become the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I mean, it's not like they have a lot of teams, so it's not like they had a choice but to throw them on them. I ex expect them to have one more match at Hell in a Cell where probably Kofi Kinson and Big E will finally win, and that will be the final match. Whether And if whether the Usos win or not, there will be no rematch clause. And then um, SmackDown Women's Title match I thought was pretty good too. You had Carmelo on commentary for it, and she had a dog collar on to uh, James Ellsworth, which I thought was very funny. And uh, Natalia won with a sharpshooter. I don't really get why the woman didn't get entrances. They pretty much got job entrances. That was really stupid. Um, there was something else I liked on SmackDown. Oh, I liked the uh, United States title match between AJ Styles and Ty Dillinger. I thought that was a really well-done match. Obviously, AJ Styles retained. Corbin lays them both out afterwards, and he announces that he's going to be facing AJ Styles next week for the title, which I expect AJ Styles to retain. Um, uh, things I didn't like was obviously everything with Dolph Ziggler. You know, earlier in the night he came out as Shane McMahon and I didn't like it, but I did think it was, it was kind of funny. Then he comes out as Bailey in the Ultimate Warrior and he just talks about, he just pretty much does the same thing as last week. So, I thought it was really stupid. Uh, there was something else I didn't like on SmackDown this week. Um... No, just the Dolph Ziggler stuff. I didn't even mind the stuff that went on with, uh, you know, uh, Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable facing the uh, Hype Bros. I thought that was a decent tag match. Uh, Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable win. They're doing a storyline whether or not, whether they're finally slowly starting to work together as a team. Zack Ryder looks like he's going to slowly turn heel because afterwards he didn't shake their hands. Um, and sportsmanship, he looked very frustrated. I'm, I I kind of can't wait to see what they do with Zack Ryder as a heel, but... They probably do, won't do anything special with them. I didn't really care for the whole Rusev interview. That was really pointless. So, um, And the Jinder Mahal segment where we just made Nakamura look like a fool was stupid. It would have been bad. Uh, it, I mean, it'd be better if Nakamura was there to defend himself. And since he didn't come out or anything, it would just made it really stupid. And that was SmackDown this week overall. I thought SmackDown was a really good show. Um, I thought uh, 
you know the vi um, I loved I loved all the matches on it and stuff, and I just thought SmackDown was really good. Um, and overall, SmackDown was better. I thought they had a better storylines, better matches, and just kept me entertained all throughout the show. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys, for my video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video so that way people will watch it. Please make sure you guys uh, subscribe to this channel for more co content. And click on the bell so that way every time you upload a video on this channel, you guys will get the notification for it. And please make sure you guys do the same thing for my own The Talking Eater YouTube channel because I'll be uploading a video later on tonight. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.